Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. And as we are discussing thanatology and in thanatology, we'll continue with the topic of Riker Mortis. And in this lecture, I will be discussing the differential diagnosis of Riker Mortis. So the learning objective of this lecture will be that we'll learn what are the differential diagnosis that the conditions which simulates Riker mortis, that is the cadaveric spaz, heat rigor, cold stiffening, and put defective stiffening. So these are the conditions which stimulate, which simulate uh, Riker mortis and they should be differentiated. Then I will discuss the graphic representation of all the early changes which we have discussed previously. Then I will be discussing all the graphic representation of changes which appear early after death, as they are the cooling of the body, the postmortem staining, and Riker mortis. So these are three changes. The three graphs will be discussed in this lecture. So the differential diagnosis of Riker mortis or the conditions which simulate Riker mortis. They are the cadaveric spares or instantaneous rigor. Then the heat rigor or heat stiffening. And cold stiffening or stiffening due to freezing and put effective stiffening. Now the cadaveric spares, which is also known as the instantaneous rigor. It's a form of muscular stiffening which occurs at the moment of death without the muscles going into primary flaccidity. And it will persist until the stage of secondary relaxation, that is the start of foot defection. It is said as that it is recording of the last volitional activity before death. And the cause is unknown, but it is a vital phenomenon and it is originated by normal nervous stimulation of the muscles at the moment of death. And it is usually associated with violent deaths in circumstances of extreme, intense emotional states and rigorous physical activity. Like a fighting soldier during wartime, in drowning, in mountain fatalities, and in certain suicidal deaths. These are a few pictures showing the weapon has been grasped tightly within the hand. Fatigue may be also a factor in some cases, but the cadaveric space has a medical legal importance because it records the last act of life. So it gives an idea about the cause and the manner of death. It affects all the muscles, but most commonly involved are the single group of muscles such as muscles of the forearm and the hands. For example, in drowning, the victim may hold a bunch of beads in an attempt to save himself and which will be found tightly clutched in the hand. Or a person committing suicide may grip a pistol in his hand and the weapon is firmly grasped in the hand at the moment of death. But this condition should not be diagnosed unless the grip is tight because it is so tight that it cannot be opened up easily because sometimes the homicidal event may be disguised by putting a weapon in the hand of the victim but it will not be tightly grasped. The tight grasp is because of the cadaveric space. Like the criminal sometimes to disguise, put a weapon in the hand of the dead body 
and let the rigor develop and hold it. But this is not as tight as the grasp of the cadaveric spasm. Similarly, a bunch of hair in a hand can be caught in a homicidal scuffle. Or in mountain fatalities, the shrubs and the bunch of the trees or any object can be caught in the hand of the falling person and such objects are proof of manner of death. Like these weeds which are tightly hand, clutched in the hands. Now the uh, cadaveric spans, we have talked about the cadaveric span. This is a graph uh, chart which is showing the differences between the rigor mortis and the cadaveric spans. Regarding the time of onset, the rigor mortis sets two to three hours after death, after the pre period of primary flaccidity. But cadaveric spasm is instantaneous. It is starts at the time of death because it is the record of last volitional activity. Then the predisposing factor in rigor mortis, they are nil because it appears in all types of death. Whereas the cadaveric spasm the priest disposing factors are there, like sudden death, extreme emotional states, fear, exhaustion, or nervous tension. Similarly, the muscles involved in rigor mortis, all voluntary and involuntary muscles are involved. Whereas the cadaveric spasm, a particular group, a single group of muscles, usually muscles of the arms and the hands, they are involved. Then the muscle stiffening in the rigor mortis, it is not marked but the cadaveric spasm, it is extreme stiffening and contraction and cannot be forcefully break up. In the medical legal significance, the rigor mortis helps in determination of time since death because it appears in all types of death, where the cadaveric spasm indi indicate the nature of the death, that it is homicidal or accidental or homicidal, it can differentiate. Then the body temperature in rigor mortis, it is cold because it starts after two to three hours when the body starts, the cooling has been, body has been cooled. Whereas the cadaveric span body is still warm. That is it as it has appeared immediately at the moment of death. <clears throat> The molecular death in the rigor mortis, there is the signs of molecular death. Whereas in cadaveric span, it is not because it has been seen immediately after the death. Electrical stimuli the, in rigor mortis, the muscles do not respond. Whereas in cadaveric span, the muscles do respond to the electrical stimuli. Mechanism in rigor mortis, we know it's a known mechanism that it's a chemical change which cause the stiffening of the muscle. Whereas in cadaveric span, the mechanism is not long. Now, the heat stiffening. It is seen when the body is exposed to extreme high temperature, like 75 degrees Celsius or higher, or burning of the body, or immersion in very hot liquid. So in these conditions, there will be heat stiffening or when the body is exposed to high voltage current, there will be coagulation of proteins, which will be causing the heat stiffening. But unlike rigor mortis, the muscles are pale. They are pink in color. In rigor mortis, they are pale, but they are pink in color because of the uh, coagulation. There is heat stiffening without considerable shorting of the muscles. And they are stiff, but tear easily. This is the uh, sign of heat stiffness. And due to this muscle shortening, body assumes a characteristic attitude, which is known as the boxing attitude or pugilistic attitude. Because of the coagulation of the protein, there is contraction of the muscle and body assumes this posture. 
and this is a picture of the dead body. That body has assumed a pugilistic attitude, in which there is a generalized flexion of the body, especially the neck, elbow joints, and the knee joints. Hands are also clenched. These changes have got nothing to do with the cause and the manner of death, because the heat rigor usually develops in those cases even also where the bodies has been deliberately burned after death in order to conceal the cause of death or identity. That means if the dead body already dead is now burned because of the stiffening of the heat, the body will again assume the pugilistic attitude. And this is uh, not the, uh, basically the cause and the manner. Similarly, Riker mortis does not develop in the muscles which undergo stiffening due to heat coagulation because the muscles has been, protein has been coagulated and no, no chemical process can be uh, found there in, like in putrefaction or uh, rigor mortis. So the heat stiffening persists only the muscle undergo putrefaction. Now about the cold stiffening. This is the rigidity due to freezing of the temperature. Any reduction in temperature of the body below 3.5 degree, 3 degree Celsius or 40 degree Fahrenheit will produce a volatile solidity of the subcutaneous fat and the muscles. These conditions simulate rigor mortis, but the body will be extremely cold. This rigidity is actually cold stiffening and cannot be broken by applying force. It gives, it gives a crackling sound of frozen synovial fluid at the joints, just like breaking the ice. And if the body is exposed to cold, this stiffening usually develops after the onset of rigor mortis. And this rigidity due to cold is lost when the body is moved away from the high temperature. That is, when you move the body to higher temperature, the stiffening will be lost because, which is the cold stiffening. But if you move it again to the cold temperature, it will reappear. Again sets in when it is moved to the freezing temperature. It appears quickly and disappears quickly. Now the put effect of stiffening. The put effect when sets in, there is formation of gases and because of the accumulation of the gases and the pressure effects, there is false rigidity of the whole body. And that is these stiff limbs and that is put effective stiffening. And this is not because of the routine going to going changes, but this is because of the accumulation of put effective gases and stiffening. Now the medical legal importance of Riker mortis is that it helps in calculation of time since death and it helps in determination of position of the body. And how it helps in calculation of time, this is from the progression of the Riker mortis, which we have discussed previously, that it starts after two to three hours after death. It completes in 12 hours from head to toe. It stays for 12 hours and it passes off in next 12 hours. So 12 plus 12, plus 12, that is, it takes 12 hours to develop on, but 12 hours it stays, and in the next 12 hours it will pass off. Now regarding the determination of the position of the body, the body will be stiffened in the position in which it was before death. And if it is not disturbed before the development and fixation of the Riker mortis, it will remain in that stiffened state. If the body was in sitting position, it will be stiffened in that sitting position. And uh, when the rigor mortis is fixed, if you change the position, it will not be changed. So it, 
helps in estimation of the time and similarly the manner and the cause of death. Now regarding the uh, graphical representation of all the changes which appear after death. So these are all the changes which are plotted together. That is the cooling of the body, the postmortem staining and the rigor mortis. And then this yellow line show, showing the decomposition which starts after 24 hours and then it progresses on. And the cooling, it is delayed for the initial time and then it is uh, progressing the purple line. So the summary of this lecture is that we have learned in this lecture, the differential diagnosis of rigor mortis, which is the cadaveric spares, heat rigor, cold stiffening and foot effective stiffening. Then we have discussed the graphic representation of all the early changes after death. That Elgar mortis, the liver mortis and the rigor mortis, all the three changes are plotted together in one graph. So thank you very much. This is all about the rigor mortis. We'll continue the topic of thanatology. And in the uh, description below, there is the link for all the lectures on the thanatology. Take care and bye. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And this is my channel name, Dr. Javed. Thank you very much.